we're going to start with with Chelsea. Um, there's a lot of comments there uh, it, coming up in the comments section, talking about you know Adele there says what what do we rate Chelsea's signings? Um, well, in my grades, obviously. I feel like I may have been slightly harsh in terms of what I've given them, but I feel like it's been a really strange summer for Chelsea overall in terms of it's been a bit muddled, I'd say. That's the best way I can put it, that we, we kind of knew which direction they were heading in. They've dragged it out. We know they had a new owner, but but I gave them a B for their transfer activity. Obviously, Fafana, Kukurea, I feel like they massively overpaid for those players. Uh, Kulabali and the Bamiyang are kind of just they're good players but are they past their best um, and yeah I, I'm just intrigued to see what you guys think about Chelsea how we rate them Andy do you want to jump in here yeah I, I'm so beyond worrying about overpaid uh, for players I, I think because it, it's very clear that there is enough money to go around to get all of the overpaid players uh, for a club like Chelsea uh, I really like what they did if you just look at the players they brought in I have questions about Fofana, we have one season of evidence. So we all here rate him quite highly. We have one season at 19 years old. That was two seasons. That was two years ago now. It's been a while since we have seen him perform at that level. And clearly his head was turned. He was distracted by the potential to go to Chelsea. You know, uh, he, he's going to have to show up, I think, on day one and really deliver and show that he's back to being at that level that he was for Leicester a couple of years ago because of the way the entire thing played out. I think that has the potential. If he doesn't start quickly at Chelsea, uh, it might start to look like, well, why did we spend all that money on this guy? Well, why did we bring this guy in? Um, you know, it's 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 been a while. It really has. I want to give yeah. them a little bit of a little bit of leeway because of all the mayhem that happened at the end of last season. I don't think they were necessarily planning on spending this much money. I believe Rudiger and maybe even Christensen stay if things are stable there. They got a little bit of a Rudiger replacement in Koulibaly, although Koulibaly liked, well, Rudiger liked to shoot from distance though too, didn't he? Uh, occasionally. But what Fofana can be, and if you're going to learn under somebody, it's Thiago Silva. Like if you're going to become a world-class center back starting from a young age, it's him. I, I like what Chelsea did in the short term quite a bit. Um, I, I'm i really interested in if this Zakaria was really a short-term bid or if this is a guy who can come in and play for quite a while because at some point, Conte is not going to be at the same level of speed. And they're going to need something more. I know we've seen a lot of Loftus-Cheek, but does that mean he's found his gear? Uh, and Joe, as an as an Englishman, I'd want to know this. Does that mean he's found his gear, or is that was that a sign that Chelsea really needed to get another center midfielder in? I think it was a sign. I think it's one of those situations where a manager plays a player who probably isn't going to play a lot and saying, "Look, you know, this is a situation. I need some help here in this area." And Loftus Cheek is a great player, but obviously he's been wedged in right wing back a few games, yep. and it's just showing. I think that Chelsea did need to strengthen in a few er areas, and Thomas Tuchel is pretty adept at sending those messages out when he wants to. Pretty clever guy. Um, we look at the other top six teams. I've kind of grouped Man City, Arsenal, and Tottenham all in the same area when it comes to my grades of having a very, very good transfer window. We've talked a lot about um, City and Arsenal with Gabriel Jesus in particular. Andy, as our resident Tottenham Hotspur expert, they started They started really well in the summer, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. Perisic coming in, Richarlison, um, so many very just good squad players you say to strengthen the almost 12 to 17 right uh, on the bench but are you a bit not worried but a little bit like mm, kind of fizzled out a little bit this summer maybe there was other areas where they could have strengthened or are you okay with the business Tottenham did because overall excellent window and those players are all bedded into the team now aren't they Basuma was another good sign as well by the way yeah, I, I think the one disappointment for Spurs happened pretty early on in the window, and so I think a lot of a lot of Spurs fans have probably moved past that. It was not getting uh, a true star at center back to bring in. They wanted Bastoni, and, and I think that would have been their number one option. When that didn't happen, they ended up, you know, kind of settling for long lay, coming on uh, loan from Barcelona. That's fine. I don't think he's appeared in a Premier League game yet, 
Um, but I, I do think that it, it was all about the depth and building the squad that's going to be required for this season. You throw in Champions League and six highly competitive games in the group stage in a condensed period of time due to the World Cup coming up. Uh, a lot of players going to the World Cup, coming back, maybe going to be injured, maybe going to be completely uh, destroyed physically. And, 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 you know, by the time January rolls around, so there's a lot of questions that, that I think Conte um, – has almost answered, I think, for the majority of the season yeah. so far by by having the squad that he's got. So I, I'm not too worried about it. I'm not too worried about the kind of slow start on the field either. You know, drawing a couple of games against uh, you know a couple of rivals from London. Th- that's how they're going to play. Like th- it, you, yeah. if you're going to to truly believe in and give a manager like Conte everything that he needs, then I think you have to do it wholeheartedly. I don't think you can continue to flip flop back and forth. Um, and so, until shown otherwise. I think it's going to be fine for Spurs. I really do. Okay, I'm going to chuck this question out to everyone watching. Who had the best transfer window this summer? Who had the worst transfer window this summer? There's a few contenders for that in the Premier League right now. Rounding up some of the other thoughts we had, obviously you said Newcastle had a good window. I've kind of grouped Manchester United and Liverpool very similarly um, in terms of the business they did. I think obviously Liverpool getting in Nunez early was excellent. Getting in mellow is just kind of a bit of a stopgap. And Jurgen Klopp's even said it himself, right, Nick? He said, I would have liked the owners to be... Uh, he said, oh, if it was me, I would have been a bit more aggressive in the transfer market. And yeah, they spent a lot of money on Nunez, obviously lost Sadio Mane. That was a direct replacement for him there. Um, would you agree with that assessment? Liverpool, Man United, they're kind of both did okay, but could have been better. Yeah, definitely could have been better. Definitely could have been better. I know that that the Manchester United got hung up for maybe a bit too long on Frankie De Jong, especially. I don't know if Casemiro Casemiro was an opportunity for them for a while, but if he was, I think you just say, "All right, we'll take that guy." <laughs> I, I, there was a moment where I didn't quite realize this guy is chiseled out of stone. He comes from the Ronaldo school. They saw him putting his his shirt on today, and I got terrified when they were putting him into the game. He hasn't even started yet for them. Um, the Liverpool thing, again, I, what Jurgen Klopp did well in allowing Mane to leave, not that he had a, a ton of a choice in, is that he is taking these players who were mainstays and realized when the end of the road has come. Yeah. And I just think he's got a couple old guys in there right now that he has to have in there. And I know Henderson's not super old, but with Henderson and Milner, you're kind of like, mm, maybe the could the transition have been made a little bit earlier than now, but they also couldn't have planned on Fabinho injury Tiago Alcantara's injury um what's happened with Keita uh, I, I think it's really hard when you've recaptured the spirit of a legendary club to then take some of these players and say yeah but if we want to keep going forward we got to say goodbye to you and yeah. I, I think he's really struggled with that he has not had to do that yet well talk about saying goodbye we say goodbye to the summer window it's done while we've been chatting here it's fully shut it's over of course, we're going to see a few deals trickle through while we're chatting away here in the next 20, 30 minutes and probably into the night as well later on. But over on Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com, we keep you updated with all the latest news. We'll have a full list of all the transfer deals, not just on deadline day, but throughout the summer. And my grades are out there now for everyone to read. And as you can see, um, when it comes to teams who've done sneaky good business, I want to discuss that, gents. There are some clubs that really stand out for me in terms of yeah, like they, they've done good deals and maybe they're not getting talked about. I know. I think West Ham United have done good business, maybe later in the window, but um, they have brought in the likes of Paqueta coming in, uh, Skamaka up top. Um, a guard, when he comes back, I think is a really, really good addition. Leeds United, we talked about Tyler Adams and Aronson, but just throughout their team, Sinistera, uh, and obviously just, just some really good solid players that Jesse Marsh knows really ro- well from his previous clubs with Christensen, and Mark Rocker coming in as well. And then I want to single out Fulham for praise because in the past we've been pretty harsh on them as I have most people with their transfer window. Um, activity and maybe a lot of activity and too much in the past. But and just Pereira's come in, Palinia, Burned Leno. And then they've added on transfer deadline day, uh, Carlos Vinicius has come in, William. And then you've got the likes of Issa Diop as well as coming throughout. So really strong window for Fulham. And my team, Southampton, have just signed uh, a fourth player on deadline day, Dusha Kaletakar, the Croatian centre-back from Marseille. Very 
decent signing, I'd say, for Southampton. A couple of Man City youngsters. And then a Swiss Army knife in Maitland-Niles who can play midfield, centre-back, full-back, wherever you need him to play. So I think some teams there have done some good, sneaky good business. Nick, anybody else standing out there for you in terms of good business they've done? Uh, I like West Ham. Uh, I know you mentioned them, but I like them quite a bit. Uh, Pequeta is an amazing signing. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, but just a absolutely wonderful player, a regular for Brazil. And along um, Otilo, who they, who they got from PSG, they're just bringing in guys with real – there's belief. These, these guys, or at least their agents, believe in the West Ham project. I yeah. think that's say an awful lot uh, about David Moyes. I actually like – quite a bit what Forrest has done as well. I, I think they're just trying to survive this year. But once these, assuming they do, they have enough pieces there to be very good next year or in the second half of this year. I, I really think, uh, I've been really impressed for a long time. Haven't we been hearing about Morgan Gibbs White, Morgan Gibbs White, Morgan Gibbs White? And you're always wondering what's the hype. Well, his first game going more than 60 minutes for them, I was extremely impressed with him. Oh, absolutely. Andy, when it looks when we look at some of the teams that maybe had poor summers and poor transfer windows, you can't help but look at Leicester City, right, with the financial restraints that they had there that Brendan Rodgers has been talking about today. Obviously losing Cashmas Michael, losing Wesley Fafana, not really bringing in anybody of note. I know they brought in a new centre back to replace Fafana on deadline day, but it's, it's difficult for Leicester and I'm looking around the league and Everton and Wolves as well. I think their signings have just been okay, but haven't really addressed their needs. Again, time will tell, right? In a few weeks time, we might be talking differently about these new players that Everton and Wolves have signed, but any other teams that stick out to you that maybe didn't have great summers and their squads aren't as strong as they were um, this time last year or even at the start of the summer? Yeah, no, I, I think you picked the right one there to begin with, Joe Lester. I mean, last summer, this time, I think we were we were kind of hailing what they had done. They brought in DACA, they brought in Sumare, and they just didn't play last year. And I think at some point we need to realize, you know, players can be signed for big money, big names, whatever they've done before. If they show up to a new club and they don't play, it's because of the, there's a reason for it. There's something happening every single day in training, and we need to be ready to kind of move on, at least mentally, from some of these players versus thinking, well, you know, Kolechi Iannaccio, this is certainly the year at Leicester City that he's going to break out. It's probably never going to happen. And so if they missed last summer the way that they, they went and spent money and they had no money to spend this summer, that's effectively two straight years without like an impactful key good signing at the club for a club that was already had a squad that was on the more veteran side you know we talk about chelsea and how potentially you know there, there's a pathway for that going bad this season i look at lester and i don't see how this turns around uh under brendan rogers at least like he is the That's motivator and the yeah, the yeah. person who you know who really picks the players up and 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 gets them to perform for him at what point are they no longer listening to him and when they're no longer listening to him like it might be done. Yeah. Joe, is he going to open up an envelope and the envelope's going to say who's going to let him down? The guys who didn't transfer in here. Like yeah. that's the, I, I really worry about them. I also think the, I pointed at the screen, like I wanted to high five Andy. Uh, I think Brennan Rogers is a pretty good manager. I think there are guys there who can play who we're not seeing the best of. Um, I'd yeah. love to see some more of DACA. Uh, I know it's hard to take Jamie Vardy out. But Ianacho has had some moments for that club in the past. And, yeah. um, you know, you've got Ndidi playing at center back. And I know he's done that in the past, but that can't be the solution. I know they brought in a guy, but they're one injury away from him going back to that. So I have to wonder, I wrote in the recap for Leicester Man United, is it's going to be interesting to see how under fire two old pals, Rodgers and Gerard are in two weeks. Yeah. Uh, did you see you wouldn't have, but I'm still looking at the recap for work later tonight, the, the reaction. Uh, Rodgers, after the game, said this isn't the club it was two years ago. Well, buddy, <laughs> on his way out. Yeah, that's very true. It's very, let's wrap up some of the comments and questions we've got coming in. Ellis says, uh, Brighton getting Billy Gilmore, I feel, could be a really uh, good move, but really good signing for Graham Potter's squad. What do we think about that move? Dan James is... Uh, heading to Fulham as well. Uh, we've got some love for uh, Purvis going to uh, mm. Brighton as well, a left back. So 
Um, some interesting comments about Christian Pulisic there, saying that I think Pulisic is overrated. Um, so maybe we'll, we'll address that in the next segment. But let's go back to that comment um, about Billy Gilmore, because he's a player we all like the look of. Um, Andy, is this a good spot for him? Because I feel like at Brighton, the way they play, possession-based, it's actually a very, very smart move for him. There's a certain few clubs now that I think I'm to the point where they do a, a piece of business and I just, my first immediate reaction is, okay, that's probably good. And and Brighton is one of those clubs and and we've seen enough of Billy Gilmore to have a pretty good idea of what type of player he is. Uh, he's somebody who's going to keep the ball turning over in midfield, keep it moving around. Uh, he's going to fit that possession style really well. I think what the knock on him and why he was never really going to get into the Chelsea team was maybe didn't offer enough defensively. Well, they're a little bit more uh, rigid and structured in the way that they play at Chelsea where it's more free flowing um, and especially in the central midfield and you've got, you've got the freedom I think to push forward as well in a way that you don't for Chelsea, it's probably going to look like a really good signing. But he had a he had a, he had a solid loan last season, right? And you know, if if you were able to impress, uh, what was it at, in that Norwich team? Uh, I, I think you can step into Brighton um, and just you know hit the ground running because everybody there I think just operates in the same way, thinks in the same way, and he should take to it very quickly. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.